Hi, this is Bart Paulson, and this video is for the 20 objects curriculum that Max, excuse me, that Cycling74 has put on their web pages for Max MSP Jitter. This is lesson three about the message box because we're starting with very basic stuff. Um, message box, just this little gray box. Type M to get the box and uh, type in whatever you want. And if I click on it right here, I have it hooked up to a print object. You come over here to the max window and you see that the object, the print object, which is labeled patch one, has printed test. Okay. It's printed the name of the message, which, you know, makes sense. Now, um, I can also get it to uh, a message box can send this message if it receives a bang. If I put it in the patching mode, you see, for instance, that we've got these inlets here for the uh, uh, message. And, you know, I can just uh, send a bang and now it says test also. All right. If I send in a number, um, for instance, let me type in 16 here. You see what it does is that it just, basically it acts like a bang, that it's sending a bang because all we get is this message, message received. So numeric input will trigger a bang through a message as well. Next one is if I actually want to send the number along from the number box, I add this little placeholder here, the dollar sign one that says bring in the stuff that's coming through inlet number one. Now if I type like an 18, it says message received 18. And in fact, I can kind of drag up here and you see it receives a whole bunch of messages and just replaces it with whatever is in the number box. Um, if you want to have just a few different choices, you can create separate message boxes that feed into the one message box. So this will print message received 10 and 20 and 30 as you see over here. For number six, what I can also do is put the uh, incoming information into a particular place within the message. So now the placeholder is the second thing. So if I type a, you know, a five right there, you see it actually prints out this list, but the middle one changes according to the value here. I'll drag it up. And you can see it's one and three all the way through, but the middle one is changing. I'm gonna clear that list. And then you can also take a list from a message box and you can you know do second order lists. So this one will take the number from the number box, it'll stick into the second item here, and then it'll send it through to this message box, which will take the first and the second items from this one. Now, the first one's always going to be one, and the second one's going to shift around. So if I just kind of drag like that, see it's always a one, hundred, and then it's always a one, and then this third one uh, shifts because of its uh, relationship with the first message box. Now what I have is yet another a lesson and I have a third order one that is reversing manually the objects in the second one. So I say take the third object or the second, excuse me, the third thing, the second thing, and the first thing. So boop. Now you see it, it ends with one in a hundred and it's the first number that I'm getting from the number box at the beginning. All right. Um, this one is actually the same as number five. I can just limit it to this, but it says this user selected. So, you know, it's a nice way to put it into a larger context. And then this one is just an exercise that is very similar to the previous one, where I'm combining that people can select one of three different things, and then it puts it into this list, one, two, three, and the item that just got selected, then it reverses the order. So for instance, 30, three, two, one, and so on and so forth. That's it for the, this uh, part one. I'm going to come back in just a second uh, with another patch with all the stuff from part two. Okay, now I'm back with uh, part two and um, things get a little more interesting. What I'm doing here in this first one is I'm taking a series of patches, excuse me, messages, and then sending them to the second box. And what you would find is that this changes the contents of the message box but what it does not do is forward a bang. This is setting without forwarding. It's because this is a cold inlet. We've got a, you see, we got two inlets here. This is a hot inlet. It says trigger the message, set changes to it. This one, however, sets the message without creating output. And that's what we just did right here. 
Um, the second one gets a little more complicated. We're using prepend, which sticks text in front of the message, and append, which puts stuff at the end of it. And so, say for instance, I put some text. That feeds through to prepend. It adds the front and these two little signs just because I put them there. And the pen in the back, and so there we get that. There's our long list. Here's our floating point number. Here's our uh, integer. Anyhow, a way of modifying information for messages. All right. Um, this one, we had just have a bunch of different kinds of information. And it goes through into the append and creates sentences. And you can actually do some really neat things if you take uh, data from texts or uh, from you know XML feeds and it allows you to format it in a way that is more useful for your purposes. Um, in lesson number three on message boxes patch you know the fourth part says learn how to use comments but that's what I've been doing the whole time so that's a comment box. Okay, now we're going to start using message boxes to set the uh, uh, characteristics of other objects. This one is a message box, and I've typed it as BG color for background color. And the dollar sign one means to use the number that's coming in from this from this flow num. And the reason we're doing that is because the colors uh, here, it's RGB, uh, red, green, blue, are set from a zero to one, so like a zero percent to one percent where zero is totally uh, black. And anyhow, watch what happens as I scroll up here. Whoa, I need to give it an intermediate value. Here we go. You can see it getting brighter. Uh, again, the scrolling depends on where I am. And that's all the way red and then it gets darker. And that's because it's feeding through this message to tell it which attribute to change over here. So that's cool. All right, number six, we're just multiplying that. We're doing red, green, and blue, but they're all feeding in from the same number. You see that the uh, the placeholder has changed from one to the other. By the way, the, the last one here, the, the one point is the alpha. It's, the, it's an RGBA system, so there's actually four numbers. But you can see what happens here as we start at zero and I scroll up, they all get darker wider. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So you can actually use to control a number of objects in the um, in the system that you make. Okay, now what we're doing is uh, I just type a value in here. So see, for instance, if I type 16, it changes the message. It's going through the cold inlet, so it doesn't uh, trigger something. But again, also there's the, there's the flow here. So I got an 18 up here. That flows through. But this just sets the stage for this next one. And what we're going to do here is we're using set. Now, this one, I'm not using a cold inlet, um, but by saying set, it treats it like a cold inlet. So you see, for instance, if I type 17 right here, press enter, it changes what's in this one, but it does not trigger uh, a bang. Normally it would, but in this case, uh, it didn't. But if I type 17 down here, you see how it cycles through. And so you can use set to actually stop something uh, part way through. And then the last one in lesson three is how you can use a bang, either a bang with a button or by actually typing a message with the word bang in it to send stuff through. So let's send, uh, let's put a 42 right there. And you see that it changed this one, but it didn't pro propagate through. If I hit the bang, it propagates. Now let's do 91 and hit set. And I hit the bang over here, and it propagates through. Anyhow, that is it for um, lesson three on the message box in Cycling 74's 20 Objects curriculum. Thanks.